I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. If your relationship is in trouble, I'm the dude to call. Has your soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? Trust me, this gonna be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't his, and he still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. How was that right? Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I'm the trail has been committed. Hit you with the bad yeah. hydro routine. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my neck. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all know what's up with that intro. <laughs> it's just so icy. The voice of reason back in the building, Dash Radio. That's the app, right? Hot button is the station. Get your super phone, smartphone, intelligent phone, dumb phones out and download that app. It's a free app doesn't cost you anything. Guess what else is free? The toll-free number. Hey. 844-55-1 is the number to dial. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of reason on a Wednesday back in the building. You know how we do. Topics is crazy. Caller driven. It's a real topic today. A lot of people backed by popular demand. A lot of people been hitting me. So we got to get the reality bender back on the show. We got to get her back. So we sat down. We thought about it. We came up with a topic. Oh, this topic is going to hit y'all in so many different ways. But before I intro the topic, let me intro my in-studio crew as well as the phone guests. And then we'll hit you with the topic and questions. And remember, if you're following me on Twitter, at Zoe Williams, Tweet me your questions, tweet me your, your, you know, your statements, whatever it is you're feeling. I want to know about it at Zoe Williams on Twitter. Follow me there right now and let's participate. It's all participation today to my right. Purple hair and all purple lipstick just showed us some sneak peek pics of her secret photo shoot on the beach. Hey, this girl right here will give. Wonder Woman, a run for her money. Whitney Tabor, Team Tabor in the building. What up, Whitney? Yo, what's poppin', y'all? Hey, it's Whitney Crush Wednesday. I'm just mm. saying, like Zoe said, we I just had a crazy shoot yesterday, and just, I'm just, it was just, quite quite delicious. Get get ready. Those weren't even good, but just get ready. <laughs> oh, you sound a little ego, a little arrogant. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, those weren't even the best ones. Nah, I'm just being real. Those were not even edited or the ones I think were the dopest. Really? Yes. It, it was actually I surprised myself. I don't like doing that, but hey, do that. It's it's very hot, very very hot. She Me- pulled it off. She pulled. Come it off. Come in, Miss oh. You'll you'll see them soon. Wow. And to her right. None other than the scariest panda in the jungle, Red Panda, aka Ashanti Ford, Girl on Fire. What Girl up? on Fire production. Hey guys, I'm definitely ready to dive into this topic today. It's gonna be crazy. I'm Get glad to your phone. Angela lines. is back. Angela. Angela. Angela Dumont. Yes. Listen, on the phone line, of course, she's been gone for a minute. But she's back after changing the world, changing lives, telling people, you know, what direction to go in. She's the consummate guru, consummate transformational coach. Veronica Conway in the building. VC, welcome back. Hello. What up, VC? Hello. Hey, Veronica. Hey. I missed you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can uh, hear you. I 
Well, we're happy to have you back. I'm happy to be back. Yeah, we about to get <laughs> serious about this show right now. And Let's go. without further ado, man, oh, man, Shevitz, I can't say enough about this young lady. All I know is she's like a magical version of Mrs. Garrett. You guys remember Mrs. <laughs> Garrett from what was the... <laughs> What was the show with Tootie and they lived in the boarding? The Facts of Life. It was like a magical Mrs. Garrett, right? The reason why I say that because when she works with you, she's going to work with you like like an auntie or like a mother, right? She's not going to let you get away with no bullshit. Like she, she works with my son, right? She does a lot of healing work on his knee and on his body and on his emotions and his mind and... And she, dad, you got to get in here. Got to get in here, dad. We got to we got to filter this through you too. Some of the, you're supposed to be here too. And she will check him if he checks out. It's so cool the way she. Hey, you hey, don't waste my time, little boy. You understand? <laughs> so he stands up straight. He stands up at attention when when Angela is on deck. She ain't no joke, man. Reality bender extraordinaire for today's topic. We we like to call her the spiritual millionaire. Angela Dumas. Oh, welcome, Angela. Well, hello, Zoe. Hey. I'm Monica and everyone. Hey, Angela. Hey. Woo. Hi. Not... Hi, gals. How you all doing? We're good. Hey, We're good. Yes, this is going to be good. So listen, today's topic. Do you know your soul's purpose? A deeper look into soul contracts. Oh, my God. What is a soul contract? Just let me rattle off some questions real quick. Angela, Veronica, we're going to sit back and listen. We know you guys can answer these questions. Is Hekka on too? Did it, let me know. Somebody let me know. Hekka's on. Oh, wait, wait. Before I do that, let me bring Hekka. I, she, Hekka activated. Y'all y'all know who she is. Hekka, celebrity psychic medium. Hekka, hey, how are you? Hi, how are you? We good, girl. We got everybody. This is squad going, deep dude, today. The squad man. is on fire. We today. in here. I'm feeling real good about this. Oh man, this is about <laughs> to be fire. Listen, <laughs> if you want to participate, you better get to your phone lines right now while you still can. Eight four four fifty five dash one. Let me ask some questions regarding soul contracts. What is a soul contract? What is the purpose of a soul contract? Is a soul contract? Slash, I mean, some people call them soul ties. I don't know what that is. But is a soul contract a type of earthly experiential prison sentence? Like karma. Are you indebted? You got to pay something back? I don't know. Are soulmates and twin flames at the soul level contractually bound to one another? If so, for how long? Jesus. I've heard some people say twin flames have been in multiple lives and loved each other over centuries. That's that's heavy. Does every soul have a divine blueprint? Hmm? Why? If we do have a divine blueprint, why does one forget their soul blueprint once we're born? Like, if I chose to be here and I chose these experiences, that's kind of whack to forget what I chose. I... I don't know. Maybe that's the challenge. This is a struggle. I don't know. How are soul contracts related to karma? Let's get into it. Angela Dumont, Veronica Conway, and Heck Activated, Whitney Tabor, the Realionaire, and AKA Red Panda. Mm. I- I'm going to sit back and listen to some of these profound answers because I know it's about to get nuts. Yes. I want to hear from the three phone guests first, starting with Angela Dumont. Hey, what would you like to know? What's your first real question? What is a soul contract? Just what is it? It's a contract between people, groups of people, um, even animals. And we come together as a group, usually, including parents and all this other stuff. Mm. And they can be different groups that interlace. And we have vows and pledges and commitments bound to one another 
that actually keep us hooked and tied in ways that are usually not pleasant. Really? And so our job is to unhook them and un- unleash ourselves from these like iron-clad agreements that keep us in pain, some kind of pain, suffering, owing one another. And uh, by letting go of that, we actually become free. Wow. Wow. Veronica? Yeah, I mean, um, I would say that we have, you know, there's a difference between um, with karmic contracts. So um, sometimes when you meet someone and you feel like a, a familiarity or a recognition of them, yet you end up in a destructive relationship, there's usually a... Uh, a reason for that. You're burning off karma. You're burning off harm and damage that you've done to each other in previous encounters with each other, previous mm-hmm. incarnations. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we, we hook up with, um, like I know that with my ex-husband, I definitely had a karmic contract with him. There was something to burn off. We were here to make children, uh, but we, we had negativity to burn off. So uh, we can experience that, and so it can we can end up acting out these dramas and we think that these dramas are just sort of of the current in, the current incarnation personalities, but it really sometimes goes much deeper than that. And oftentimes, like I said, if you experience a deep sense of recognition uh, when you meet somebody, there's usually something afoot about having experienced each other previously. Wow. This is crazy. Hekka, speak on it. Uh, well, I, I have the tendency, I can barely hear Veronica, but I have the tendency to believe uh, in the same way as Angela. Mm-hmm. However, I think there's just one difference. And that difference with me is that I feel that soul contracts can also be pleasant experiences. I think if I was to think that it was only negative and not so great experiences, then I would also have to believe that there's only negative karma. But I also feel as if there could be positive karma as well as negative Mm. karma. Because we have to deal with the duality, I feel that you're going to have to take the good with the bad, or you're going to have some negative experiences as well as some positive experiences with soul families or soul ties. Wow, the phone lines are already blazing. 844-55-1. It's crazy right now up in here. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm me personally. I'm always asking, why did I meet that person? Why in the hell did I get a slice of that foolishness? What did I do 12 lives ago that earned me yo ass? That's what I be thinking, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, I do. I'm sorry. I like to blame people. I like to be a victim. It shouldn't have happened to me. Why? <laughs> I just want to understand, like, Hilarious. like, because some you get certain things and you be like, and I, I didn't had knock down, drag out conversations with God. Like, listen, you gonna take this bullshit away? You understand? <laughs> you, you gonna you gonna take it back? Take it back, God, right? <laughs> So I I just want to understand, like, because some people, you know, we get lost in the despair of the negative experience that we have with someone. So I just want to know, like, what is the purpose of going through like this really traumatic, difficult thing with someone? What is that purpose? Yeah, can I I jump in here? I'm not going to. Is that for me? Who's that for? You just said. The, Veronica's going to answer it. It's for all of you guys. Veronica's going to answer it. I everybody. can't hear. I can't. I kind of can't hear. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Veronica's going to answer. So, Everybody's going to answer. So go ahead, Veronica. So you just said that you t- you have these conversations with God, and are asking God to take it back, and presuppose you're presupposing in that statement that God is external to yourself. Mm. Mm. Speak on it. <laughs> Oof. Right? So if we understand, you know, and much of our religion, in fact, teaches that we're separate from God, and that God, we're not just a facet of God, and that the divine is actually intrinsic to us. So whenever we are going outside of ourselves for anything, we are looking in the wrong place to begin with. Great point. Great it's all point. an inside job. It's an inside job. Pekka? Well, <clears> hmm. <throat> What was the question again, Zoe? Um, I was I was trying my best to hear Veronica. I'm just having the hardest time hearing her, and I would love to hear what she has to say. Um, is there a way we could be 
having her turned up a little bit? Uh, I'm not quite sure. It's just 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 the volume here. So just try to hear me. Don't worry about anybody else. Just try to hear what I'm saying. Let me. I'm a, I'm gonna rephrase the okay. question for you again. <laughs> Uh, and, and and my question again is, you know, when you're with somebody in a traumatic situation, then I'm coming to Angela, Red Panda and Whitney. When you're in a traumatic situation with somebody and, you, you know, you find yourself in this place of despair, it's just such a hurtful kind of situation. And you find yourself asking, like, why am I in this situation? God, what what are you doing? Why did you you know, why did you put me in this situation? Right. I'm asking the question, why do we experience these traumatic situations? What is the purpose of it, right? You know, why do we attract this difficulty or this challenge? What is the purpose for it in our lives? Well, uh, first of all, I don't feel as if God has put you in the position. If you're having an experience, it's because you felt like you needed to have that experience. So you made that a part of your blueprint before you even entered into the rim, uh, into this rim. A part of your blueprint was to interact with the person of this type of energy so that you can get whatever lessons you needed to get or you could fulfill whatever negative or positive karma that you may have needed to experience at that time. But um, in other words, you're having the experience because you chose to have the experience, not because anybody else forced you to have the experience. Mm, that's interesting. Angela, what do you think? Yeah, I really agree with everyone. And uh, the reason I said that it's usually negative is because most of us that are running around trying to find a solution to a problem, we're not having a problem with what's good. Hmm. We're perfectly fine with what's going on good. So what ends up happening is that whether it's positive or negative, we may be fulfilling certain things. Some of us have a time where our life is very easy here. That also is part of the blueprint. It's what we chose. But I have to agree, there is this choice, and the choice is I have something to learn, and in order for me to learn it, I will forget that I put this in here, and when I see it, I have two choices. I can either love or I can be in fear. And that gives you a way out of that contract. Wow. Whitney Tabor, are you listening to this? I'm just so how do you explain <laughs> your jacked up relationships? First of all, relax, because I don't look at my relationships as being jacked up. You know what? You, honest- in, you in relationship debt. Your relationship FICO score is low as hell. You owe First a lot off, of you cur- hating <laughs> hard right now. I don't know what is happening right now, because this is too much right now. No, but um, well, realistically, I don't look at any of my failed relationships all two of them i don't look at those as being bad like i don't look at them as like i was a bad person in a previous life so that's why i'm getting stuck with these sort of situations honestly a lot of the situations i was put in you know relationship wise was my fault like kind of like oh now you want to be accountable now that all the superheroes is on the phone i stay accountable don't even say (laughs) ask any of them niggas be i'll have them niggas call back and tell you i've been saying like yo it was my fault for letting you treat me like this but hey i'm stronger than you so guess what bye felicia i'm out i'm going to do my own thing listen i saw Hmm. i saw bye listen listen yeah 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 yeah. hey i saw hancock (laughs) You not stronger than you. She, she trying to be the little white girl from Hancock, right? I'm stronger That's than me, you, my, yeah, Hancock. But I'm, <laughs> I see you, Whitney. That's me. That's me. All I'm that. not afraid of you, Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> be very afraid, so. <laughs> so, Ashanti. Yeah. Because, I, 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 listen, y'all don't know Ashanti. Uh, see, we, we label her as the scared panda. Don't start. Ooh. And she is a little scared. But she's also crazy, too. <laughs> Right. She's wild. Right. Right. So Ashanti, this is why I love about Ashanti as a radio personality. Ashanti comes in here and yeah, it's radio, but Ashanti be listening to these topics and also trying to work things out personally. Right. Mm Because they're hella, you know, these topics are crazy. Right. Right. So when I talk to Ashanti off the air, you know, I'm not going to put her business out. 
You too late he for might. that. He might. Right. He definitely might that. Die. Watch I don't out know for the what slip. Today is, oh well. In, in that case, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> when Ashanti was out on the street prostitute, no, oh, she never did that. Last Wednesday, I was apparently pregnant. This nigga be making shit up. Don't even. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just kidding. It's all good. It's all fun. But I love Ashanti because she's inquisitive about herself. And I keep trying to tell people about relationships. If you're not looking for that personal curriculum, you're really in the relationship for the wrong reason. And sometimes that personal curriculum comes through, like Angela said, through conflict, right? Through challenge, right? It might be an oppositional thought to what you had or an oppositional idea to what you thought was good for you. Ashanti, I know you have a relationship question. Yeah, I do. But before I go there i have a different definition of a soul contract because oh, well, get, my, get on it then. my grandmother actually used to use that phrase a lot when i was younger but in the way that she used it was a contract within yourself to bear through the lessons mm. that you go through mm. um and then apply them so her okay, her contract was like within yourself all right granny it's kind of different i like that i like I that, that. Was- so let me ask the entire mm. panel this right now can soul contracts be broken or renegotiated midterm? Can we renegotiate? Can we burn off the karma before the lifetime is over? And if so, can we get back into a fruitful relationship with the person that was destined to challenge us the most? Well, maybe we crashed and burned once and then came back together. Is that possible? Can we, can soul contracts be broken or renegotiated? Hekka, I'm going to go with you. Yeah, I, I, I have the tendency to think that uh, they can be broken, one, but also they can be put on pause. Mm. And put on pause meaning I'm not ready to deal with this right now in my life. So at this time, I'm going to move away from the situation. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's broken. It's to be continued, perhaps in another lifetime. Mm. Um or either later down in this lifetime. But can they be broken? Yes. I feel like the only time that it could actually be broken is if you have actually completed the necessary requirements of the contract. I hear you. And I at hear that you. point, it ceased to exist. I can smoke a bag of that. Mm. Angela Dumas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All, all contracts are really ultimately with ourselves because everything we see out here is actually a reflection of us. So that goes to Ms. Panda um, and, um, and anyone who's really thinking, like, well, how does that relate? Um, and they can, anything can happen because if we're writing the blueprint before we even get here on some other level, in some other place, then we wrote that in if there is a negotiation, a pause, a shift, mm. a rewrite, uh, I'm not ready yet. Okay? Wow. Wow. I love You already wrote it. You wrote it in. Wow. Listen, if you're just tuning in, it's about to get crazy because when we open the phone lines, we're going to let them loose. You guys got questions about the soul contracts you negotiated before you came here? These people on the phone can help you deal with who you doing spiritual business with. I see a soul contract as spiritual business, man. (laughs) So I'm just saying a lot of times we get caught up in the social construct of what relationships are supposed to look like. And then we ignore the spiritual business for in favor of the uh, 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 of the social business. And I'm just saying right now, if y'all got issues with the person you're in a spiritual contract with, I'm going to need you to call in. Ask these very powerful healing forces on the phone right now to deal with it. Angela will be there. Listen, Angela Dumas, she worked with my boy. I'm telling you, she ain't no joke. She ain't no joke. She do this now. 844-55-1 is the number to dial. 844-55-1 is the number to dial. True or false? Your, your original divine blueprint lies within you and has always been within you. And you have to live through experiences in order to remember bits and pieces of it. Ugh. Somebody speak to me. 
Angela, can you tell me, can you give me clarity? Because I'm confused. My life is a mess. Yeah, um, we just don't remember, but we can't come here knowing that. And so we choose, we also write in what we're going to remember. And when that happens, if anyone's been doing anything spiritual ever, it's because we've already done it before, and we're just trying to clean it up a little bit more, because we are a spirit. And so, you know, we use this earthly format, this realm, to help us climb into a higher consciousness. That's why the difficulties make us either lift up and choose a branch in the road, either fear or love. Mm. You love it, you learn how to shift it. Okay? Wow. And at the other way, we keep repeating it until we can finally go, oh, I know what I have to do now. Mm. That's one of the problems that people have with re- re- repetition, repeating problems. Wow. Mm. So that's my quick and quick and dirty on that. That's the quick and dirty. Hecka, mm. jump on in there. Who is, who is that talking? Is that Veronica? Yeah. Okay, so Veronica, I'm going to bite you. Yeah. I know there are other people out there who would love to bite you, but I'm going to bite you. You know you got to wait for me to bring you in. I can't see you, Veronica. Uh, hey. Jesus. <laughs> Speak on it, Veronica. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, but I just wanted to speak to that part about forgetting, because one of the things that we're starting to see more and more with this generation of young people, the indigos, is that they are remembering, right? There was something that I saw recently about how this young white kid realized that he he came here and he hadn't forgotten. And he said that he was a black woman that had gotten murdered in the Midwest, and uh, he remembered it, and he described it in detail and brought people to the place where he was murdered. The, the woman was murdered, and so he knew so many details because he, the veil hadn't dropped for him. I remember when my children were little, before the age of, I'm going to say before the age of six, they spoke of things, other realities, other universes, other things that they could not have known and they were very articulate about them. So I think that there's a couple of things. I think in in, in United States culture, there is such a um, um, a resistance to all things metaphysical and to all the other energies that exist here with us. You go to other cultures, it's typically more, they're more embracing of it. It's like no big deal because they understand that that's the human spiritual experience, but I think that right now, in this day and time, less and less of the young people that are coming in right now actually have forgotten their previous existence. Wow. Ashanti? I know we gotta go to break. The phone lines are already crazy. That number again is 844-55-1, but before we go on break, I have a question. Does having a soulmate rob you of your own identity because of past karmic debt? You mean to tell me I'm serving a karmic sentence this life for some bullshit I did two lives ago? Potentially. Damn. 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 That's the question. God damn. And I didn't even do it. I wasn't even there. Jesus. Jesus. I'm trying to have a free life. (laughs) Listen, (laughs) we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we go into the phone lines. It's getting crazy. 844-55-1. Hot button radio. Voice of reason. Dash. Hey, this is Zoe Williams, and you're listening to the Voice of Reason on Hot Button Radio. I know you're getting a busy tone. It's okay. Just call back because we're going to the phone lines right now. This is Zoe Williams, the voice of reason on Hot Button Radio on the Dash Radio platform. Today's topic, man, it's an incredible topic, boy. Soul contracts. Ooh. You know what? I've seen a lot as a former music industry executive, as an A&R person, I've seen a lot of bad contracts. As a soul, can you get in? Can you agree to participate in a bad contract before you're born? Oh, this is crazy. Ashanti, what was the question you asked before we went to break? Man, I've tweeted so many. Oh, here it goes. Does having a soulmate rob you of your own identity because of past karmic debt? Can you be serving a current life sentence <laughs> for some shit you did in a past life? 844-55-1. I, I know a lot of people don't even think about their intimate relationships like this, but this is really part 
of the relationship experience that doesn't get a lot of attention because it's subtle. We're unaware of the spiritual nuances. We're, when we're in a nightclub, what are we hearing? We're hearing music. Two we got chains. We got liquor in us. There's strobe lights. So she don't really look the way you think she looks, and nor does he. No. <laughs> right so we've got all of these stimulus going on and we're just distracted and 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 what's available is physical and emotional you can't really get no mental because the music too loud to have a real conversation right mm -hmm. but all the while what we don't understand is happening is that spiritual thing is happening too and it's so subtle it's beneath the consciousness. So we're not really aware of it. We, I don't know why I was attracted to that person, right? Mm. So my question is, how do we bring forth the spiritual side of relationship? That's why we're doing this show today. Soul contracts. We got the phone lines open. As a matter of fact, are you guys ready to deal with some uh, callers? Yeah, bring them on. Angela? Yeah. Our spirit yeah. our spirit guides. Yeah. These that's what These I'm are, call This them. is the spirit, spirit. team this right here. This is the team spirit. Yeah, team wizard right yeah. here. <laughs> right? Hekka and Veronica. Y'all ready team wizardry? And, and, and Angela, yeah. man. They yeah. the three the the three wise women, man. Yeah, this is Charlie's Angels of spirituality. <laughs> I'm just saying, they killing it. <laughs> that's hilarious. So Charlie's Angels. Yes. <laughs> Zoe's angels. Uh, I knew I was waiting for it. I, I was to, gonna say it, but listen, I was like, well, I have to put myself in a leadership role. Oh Zoe's angels will be deployed right now. Zoe's spirit angels are coming to save you. So here we go. Let's go to New York, line six. What Sean E. What up, Sean? Hi, everyone. Oh, that's Shawnee. Shawnee. Okay, let me just say. Let me just say. We got. Shawnee, we have dyslexic engineers. Oh, my gosh. One dude, he wrote your name with his left foot. It literally says... And it says, Sean E. Like a capital E. Like, oh, my God. This, this he wanted like, you to pronounce it right. He probably didn't know how to spell he it. He probably a, didn't know you knew how to read. It's crazy. Yeah, he's, a, he's a failure at legibility. It's awesome. Anyway. Uh, Shawnee. Hey, Shawnee. Hey, Shawnee. Welcome to the show. Who, Hey. Which which Thank of Zoe's spirit angels would you like to direct your question to? Um, can I just ask the question and anyone can jump in? How um, about that? Make your own rules, boss. <laughs> I like it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so this is the um, kind of sort of the thing that I'm wondering. I have um, an ex that I haven't been with for probably about 17 years. Hmm. Now, I've known him probably for about 20 or just under, um, and currently he's married, going on five years. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Like, I'll always love him to a degree, hmm. but since the first day that I met him, we always had um, this chemistry and this attraction, hmm. um, and just this, I always felt like I knew him from before, and even though time has gone on, we've been speaking, not speaking, all that different stuff even though he's been married going on five years um they're just not that i want to still be with him because i love him differently but there just seems to be something that feels unfinished with us mm. um maybe not even maybe not even in a relationship type of situation um right. he actually told me last year i married yeah i married and i'm, I'm already okay with the fact that i'm always gonna love you so whenever you're ready <laughs> you know like I'm here for it. All right. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not necessarily wanting to do that. But again, it just feels like something is very unfinished, and I'm just wondering what that is. Mm. Ladies, who will um, take that? I'll, I can, I'll take a piece of it. I don't have all of it. But and then, it from... and then let's alley oop it to Angela, and then the next call okay. is Hekka. Okay. Great. So one of the things that I've learned in relating is that. Because we have such a limited view of what relationships are supposed to be like, meaning we get trained that it's like, oh my God, we had some charming and then we fall in love and then he's supposed to be my everything. But the truth is, is that uh -huh. different people have different purposes in our lives. I had a coach tell me once, people are strategies for getting needs met. Ooh, ooh. Right? They're strategies uh -huh. for getting uh -huh. needs met. And so Yikes. there are people that come into our lives that fulfill certain needs. Like I dated mm -hmm. a guy once and 
we fell in love, because I and both love, but really our real purpose, the place that we really had synergy was around, he really wanted to parent my kids, because he's lost a daughter, mm-hmm. and we had great business synergy. But when we entered into the romantic sexual realm, he was too, he just couldn't hang with me. So uh, sometimes we can experience a loving scenario, but we have to be discerning enough to figure out what the nuances are and what the appropriate lane is for the love. All people are not meant to be things to all people. That's what the universe is for. Right. So if we can have clarity mm-hmm. about the parts that work and the parts that need fulfillment, then we can be actually be sane inside of the scenario. Okay. Mm-hmm. Angela? Mm-hmm. Angela Dumont. I knew everything that was said. Um, so I'll just. Um, not everyone that we come in contact with do we actually have a completion with. Sometimes when we are in a situation where something feels incomplete, we are actually calling on ourselves to complete something within our own self. Mm. It's just an, a reflection mm. that seems to be outside of us. Again, if you're seeking any kind of completion outside of you, it's always telling you what do you need to recognize you are whole and complete within. And the thing is, is we can talk about this all day, and that's why a lot of the work I do is not just about talking. We actually have the experience to complete it within ourselves. Mm. That happens, and this will not feel like a want that is un- unfilled. You'll start feeling satisfied. And that's a lot of what the soul work is, to know that you are satisfied with your life as is. Right. And that doesn't mean you don't have to have what you would like to have. But a lot of these things that we're talking about are just ways of keeping us in lack. Mm. So and I know that's probably just went way too far. No, no, that, no, 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 no. That was great and that was perfect. And I want you guys to have, seriously, I kid you not. I want you guys to have an experience with Angela. The last time she was here, the sister who came to visit the show, Car- Carlita, right, from from Texas, we had her on video. Uh, Ashanti was telling me not to film her. I had her on my Periscope. While she was crying. As a matter of fact, uh, okay, while we're at it, should we, should we go to the mic cuts? <laughs> should we? See? Exactly. No. Behave. No. <laughs> now, now, but no. Now, the girl, I, I mean, I was just blown away because I'm, I'm looking at her and I'm watching her go through this energetic movement. See, a lot of people don't understand this about Angela because I've seen her work on my son. Like, I've seen it. Angela may not come across like hella clear and that's because we're listening for a direct linear kind of answer but she speaks in this multi-faceted multi-dimensional space and it's really a description of what she's seeing so it's not really an answer she's kind of describing what's all in involved it's almost like she's a painter right so (laughs) it's really crazy and i've seen how this works like i'll ask her a question about something looking for a direct answer and then the work will have something to do totally with something else. Okay, so uh, your pride right now. Um, wait a minute. I I wasn't even talking about me and, and pride and stuff. And then she say, okay, let's work here in pride because this is where it's at. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. Can I ask? I think when I when I called that night and I got disconnected and I think um, Veronica addressed some of my issues but I could never get back in can I ask the same question to Angela about my dreams don't play yourself you on the phone yes that means yes (laughs) Shawnee that means yes in Zoe language so go right ahead boo Uh, okay so Angela I I called in before and I was explaining to the panel that um, I've been dreaming I'm an avid dreamer I dream all the time it's been happening probably for almost about 20 years and my one of my things with my dreaming is how do I know how do I get secure in knowing if the dream is something that was in my subconscious that that made the dream come to fruition or if it's just something it's like a premonition that I'm having 
you know, like how do I get secure in that and how do I just know when it's when it happens, you know, how to identify what it is. Okay, well that's a more complicated question than you might realize, but the quickest way to that is um, your mind is going to create dreams to try to get rid of stuff that you don't need anymore. It's like this defrag or cleaning up your computer. It needs to be cleaned, and so sometimes we get stuck in a loop, and if it is a premonition, it usually comes to fruition at some point pretty quickly. The best thing you can do yeah, yeah, yeah. is to pull back and stop trying to figure it out. Mm. Stop staying in your head. Just let it be there, and and just, like like the more you try to figure it out, the more it stays in. You're actually locking it in. Unlock it and let it out. It could be the same dream forever, but part of you is actually liking that you're holding on to it. Mm. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it, it it you're trying to see if you're okay or not. You're going to be you're fine, and if it's going to come to fruition, it will. So you just have to let go and, and, and allow it to happen, whatever that is. But free yourself a little bit because I'm seeing that you're kind of twisted into it a little bit, like fold it in. Unfold it. Let it unfold. That's the, that's the best way I can, I can see the energy right now to tell you that. Wow. In a quick way. Wow. Okay. So, Shawnee, let me okay. just say I appreciate you for reaching out. We got to get to these other callers. The phone lines are just jam-packed thank you so much for reaching out to the voice of reason Bye, it's what we do Bye, we love Shani. you girl See ya. new york is in the building because of you the number to dial is 844-55-1 you're listening to the voice of reason today's show is soul contracts did you sign a bad deal in your previous life and now you're living out the terms of that deal in this life jesus 844-55-1 oh What if you was like this really high spiritual guru type and then your karma caused you to come back as a different kind of spiritual being? Maybe someone who didn't have spirituality. Maybe somebody who's hella carnal and for lack of a better word, evil. I don't know. 844-55-1. This is crazy. Ronan, Minneapolis. What? What? Minneapolis. What was the word? What city? <laughs> Minneapolis. I don't know. What just the land of the minions. <laughs> Minneapolis. Land of the minions. Minneapolis. <laughs> what up, Ronan? What's going on, boys? We're the family. What's happening, Mike? Uh, I'm chilling. I'm just like a, I came from some hard nosed clarity, and I'm gonna need the help of you and your uh, circle of warlocks to help me out. On, hey, hey, uh, these are all family. witches. They're not males. Going up doves. No. Men are warlocks. No, we're not witches. No witching. No, no. We ain't witching over here, cuz. Well, <laughs> Whitney said we ain't witching over here, cuz. <laughs> No, it's nah, nah, we ain't doing that. So, uh, honestly, it's a, it's a question that's been bothering me for, I won't say a couple of years. And I've been wanting to know what exactly is my soul's purpose? That's my first question. Wow, that's a pretty deep question. That's crazy. Angela? Did you hear him, Angela, maybe? Oh. And, and Hacker could jump in here, too. Hmm. What do you think your sole purpose is? Because no one can tell you what your sole purpose is unless you know it yourself. And you may not know it or may not think that you know it. But what do you think you're here for? That's a, qu- a question you can ask yourself and you may not know the answer in this moment. But you need to ask it to yourself and listen for the answer. Mm, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. wait. That was big. Hold on. Hold. Mm. Stop the presses. So you mean to tell me, because I've seen, who who all have seen that, uh, I guess it's a meme on Facebook or Instagram or something, and it says, prayer is, I guess, talking to God, but meditation is listening for God, like Mm. listening for God's voice to talk to you. So in yes. asking that question yes. and then getting silent, you allow the answer to come, and that answer is actually coming from you? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Wow. Whoa. 
I just had a revelation. The reason I asked, <laughs> uh, the reason I asked is like I, uh, I wanted to like, say something. If, if you don't mind, wait, wait. I'm gonna get to you. I'm gonna let you come in right after he finishes his thought, Hecka, and then then you respond. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. The reason I asked because like before 2012, I want to say, like I've always had this thing with deja vu. I would see things, and then as soon as I run right there, it was snapped to attention. Like that's either where you're supposed to be. Or mm-hmm. this is where I mean this individual is supposed to meet. Now that purpose would uh, it 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 will, it, will, it will come out, you know, in its in its due time. But ever since 2012, it's kind of like it's been shut off. And then like ever since then, I've been like trying to put everything on pause. Like cause usually I use that as a guide, but like all of my like it's like my GPS has kind of been hmm. recalculating for the mm. long time. So that's what I was trying to figure out what is going on because that's why I've been kind of on pause mode on everything. Almost things. Hacker. Okay, I wanted to just say that um, I feel that this energy that I that I see in in the guy that's on the phone right now is an energy that I've had some really really difficult, like deep, deep, hard, difficult experiences, not just in a past life, but in this lifetime as well. And I feel that there's an intellectual part of who you are. Uh, and as a result of you being granted or you entering into this realm with that intellectual energy that you have, I feel like you've come here to teach people and to show others their way based on the experiences that you've already had. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they were pretty rough. I feel like you've seen some really rough things as it pertains to relationships, not just relationships with your intimacy, but just relationships, period. Mother, father, just deep, dark, super deep, dark Plutonian type of stuff, transformative, uh, oh, yeah. transformative type of energy, and you're called to utilize that transformative energy to help others to transform their lives. Ronan, who by have you killed speaking, in a past life? Of writing, right. um, no, no, I, I don't know who I killed. Of that the nature. thing is, like, uh, I've, uh, there's been things where my father was in an auto accident with a truck flipped 13 times, and he was thrown out. Wow. On the 12th rotation. And the last time I talked to him, he was in the hospital. The other part was I had a friend in the military when I was going through a lot of stuff. And when he passed away from, I guess, uh, prostate cancer, my unit wouldn't let me see him. Um, there's mm. been, I've been like robbed, like, I mean, robbed at gunpoint three times, shot at. Wow. Uh, Heck a hit it. Um, there it is. Heck a hit it. Even, wow. Even, even the thing is, there, there was an incident like in 2012 at, at my job where um, there was a metal pallet that fell like, about 20 feet and because I had another pallet set in front of me I still got my head split open but had it not been there Damn. I wouldn't have this conversation here Damn. so wow. a lot of stuff that I mean, I mean even things with uh, uh, even homelessness at the time at LA it's a lot of stuff that's been happening but a lot of times some people say it's some I guess some kind of favor of luck because a lot of times in those situations a lot of people have fallen off or even killed themselves and that, that somehow I keep going I don't know but after 2012, mm-hmm. it's kind of like those visions stopped. And that really got me unnerved because usually those visions will sit there like, look, okay, you're in this situation. You can turn left, and this is where you need to be. Mm-hmm. And when it stopped, it seemed like everything froze. I'm like, okay, look, I- I'm kind of a little bit nervous of moving this way or that way. So that's why I was asking. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Hecka, you want to wrap it and then... We come back to Angela because I know Angela can feel this. I feel Angela. Heck, are you want to wrap him? Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I feel like he. Has, I feel like you have an amazing, um, a, an amazing energy of communication. Like there are so many people out there that actually need mm. to hear about how you made it through all of the experiences yes. that you made it through. Yeah. Some of them because they're going through similar experiences, and some of them are not even ex- similar. But it's just. They need help in getting through whatever situations that they went through. During 2010 that you were speaking of, I feel like you were having some form of Plutonian, and I like to correlate the Plutonian experiences that we have as our as Pluto transits and make certain aspects to astrological charts and things of that nature. Back in 2010, and I don't know your astrological chart, I'm just feeling the energy. I feel as if you were having some type of Plutonian experience, which kind of started a kundalini awakening so therefore there was a lot of reading of books and um certain information that you were gravitating yourself to that you hadn't normally been used to even dealing with mm-hmm. so 
that was that experience those experiences were to prepare you even more for what's to come as it pertains to your purpose now i am a firm believer that our purposes will change and shift as we grow and we evolve so although your purpose may be this at what i'm speaking about at this very moment don't be surprised if it changes over the next couple of years as you evolve even more and wow. have even more awakening experiences. Wow, wow. Because, Angela, you want to speak to that, Angela? Um, uh, yeah, I could. Um, sometimes we really start becoming afraid of our own power, and that could be also written into our script, our, our movie script that we call, the, 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 it's a dream that we call our life. And sometimes we start getting afraid of if we do use this power that we have, it, is it taking us down the wrong road? So we'll actually stop it. We'll actually start stopping things. I also get this sense of um, a bit of an entity aspect. And there are tons and tons of entities. And entities can bring in a new uh, form, a new energy, and shift things out. But usually it's any kind of a change when there's a stop is usually based on a fear entity of some kind that wedged in and gets us stuck. So your inner GPS is still working. It, mm. You're just not as connected to it. And something happens for you to turn it off. And you're still, you're still using it. You're still, you're still moving forward. Um, and there's some part of you that's afraid to own this. And it can be changed. Mm. I do believe that anything can be changed. Especially if you can change the story you will be, um, you're still going back and reliving the story a lot. And that keeps you actually in the past. We all do it. Which is very, it's human nature. It's how we're wired. Mm, mm, and there's mm. a way to get out of that um, so that everything shifts for you. But this is a place for you that you're like in a turnstile. It's like a fulcrum point. Whereas you actually would find, your, find what worked for you to get out of it, it would change everything kind of hearkening back to what um, Heck is saying. It will wow. shift it all out. Wow. Well, well, I, want to, well I want to say, like, uh, in parting, it's like, thing, it's like um, I think, in a way, when I was at my real lowest point uh, at the time, for some reason, I, I think this is when I started first hearing about Zoe and a few others, and then, like, in listening a few years, you know, afterwards, things were starting to change, but then, like, there had to be some things that, that needed to be fixed at the time. That's why I kind of segregated myself from certain things like relationships and things like that nature. But, you know, I, I came here because I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to individuals like yourselves to like really pinpoint, you know, my next coordinates, you know, onward, because like, I got, I got a little annoyed, you know, running through these sexual and, and social lepers. Mm. And that mm. takes a lot of energy out of you. And, you know, when you start there and, you know, you have, you know, when you exchange energy with somebody, a part of them becomes you. And I felt like I had to detox myself for some time. Angela. Even now. Uh, so, uh, uh, so had, uh, Ronan, Ronan, hold on one second. Angela, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm i nowhere near as sensitive as you are or any of you. I just feel like he's holding on to something. What is that that I'm feeling, or am I projecting some shit I'm holding on to <laughs> on him? <laughs> well, probably both. Probably both. Uh, yeah. yeah, probably both. But it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, that low point he's talking about, mm -hmm. um, there's something going on in there. To me, it's very, oh gosh, uh, it's like a bit of an ego thing. The ego got stuck. It's like a broken record that got stuck in a chong, a chong, a chong, a chong. It's like a groove, you know. But the, mm. look, Ronan, you're very, very strong, and I really think that Heck is onto something there, totally right on. And the only thing you have to do is get off the broken record, and you got to know how to do that. Mm. Not so many people actually can show you how. They can talk to you all day long. You got to actually do stuff about it. Mm. We can actually change things. So um, just know that there's. It's just, the answer is here for you now, and you've got it. You don't have to look to anyone for the answer, but you're not quieting your mind enough to find the answer for yourself. You're still kind of running and searching, and that keeps you in a in a loop, and that doesn't help you. You're closer than you think, though. So. Wow. Listen, Ronan, hey, bro, I, yeah. I, I know you've been following us for years. 
5150 show, Zo What show, Voice of Reason. Man, I didn't know that, you know, we had that kind of an impact, man. And, and you humble me because you've stepped up to the plate to at least be inquisitive mm-hmm. about yourself. So many people are afraid of the self-inquisition, right? That they turn to this external pursuit of happiness or distraction or whatever. But the fact that you're on the path, man, listen, man, I'm humbled by your call and I appreciate you for reaching out. We've got phone lines jammed, but we got to take a quick break. We're going to come back. And when we do, we're going to deal with more. You guys want to holler at Zoe's spiritual angels? <laughs> yes, you do. The number is 844-55-1. That's what we're doing up in here. Um, hey, it's a it's a real situation happening right now. Um, I had one question, though, because Hecka said something that was heavy, too. She's, it made me think, it made me formulate this question. Do past life sins, right? or evils kind of send us into the next life destined to maybe be responsible to teach. Like we, we, we destroyed some shit in a previous life. Now you responsible for undoing that destruction by being an instructor. Ooh, a four, four, 55 dash one. This shit goes deeper than Alice in Wonderland. You want to get up out of this hole? You got to ask those spiritual angels. I'll be back in 2.2. Holla. I'm Zoe Williams. The voice of reason. The voice of reason. On Dash Radio. Yeah. Ooh. Soul contracts. Listen. Did you sign up for a shady deal? Did you sign a bad relationship record deal in your past life? Huh? <laughs> what are those little drops? Is somebody playing Cubert? <laughs> That's me. That's me. It's Angela. Uh, <laughs> Angela dropping dookie. She's <laughs> dropping knowledge, bro. I feel it. Listen, we're talking about soul contracts. Love drops. Love drops right? I want I want to know, like, what is the purpose, man? What is the purpose of what's happening in our lives and our relationships? To me, everything is relationships. There's nothing that is outside of the realm and the dominion of relationship. It's how we interface. We interface with the planet. We interface with our food source. We interface spiritually. We interface uh, physically. Everything is relationships. And I'm just trying to understand, you know, like... How do we live this life without fear, right? Now, the reason why I'm segueing to this is because uh, somebody just reminded me. I get caught up in the topics and I forget, right? A whole bunch of stuff, right? My book came out today. Oh, shit. So, so somebody was like, hey, turn up. Yeah, so, 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 book turn up. so they were telling me. You got to mention the book. The this so this is how the book is launched. Let me explain. It launches first on Kindle tonight. So it comes out on Amazon Kindle tonight. The relationship dismount how to stick the landing. We just uploaded it to Kindle. It comes out tonight. So we're really excited about that. Um and I'll be, you know, you know how I do. I'll push the link around so people can, you know, participate and all the people who donated at the level where they get a free ebook we'll be shooting out the ebook to all the people that supported the project and and help bring it to fruition Uh, a lot of the concepts that are being shared here tonight ironically man it's it's in the book and and i just feel rightly guided i'm not egoic enough to say oh i'm i'm this know-it-all kind of guy and i and i learned you know, when I, when I was 23 years old, an old man told me, he said, man, you're a very intelligent dude. And he said, there's really nothing I can teach you. Hmm. He wow. said, but one thing. He said, I can teach your ass how to not be judgmental. Hmm. Because coming with all of this brilliance or intelligence or whatever you want to call it. He said, it's also some built in ego and, and know it allism in you, too. And that's going to cause you to judge people. He told me that when I was 23 years old. So. Pride. So, right. I mean, 
Every time I talk to Angela, she goes, okay, let's get some pride out. <laughs> let's open up the front of your body and let's let it come out, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so totally. listen, if I can't do shows that change people's lives, if I can't do work, right, personal work that change people's lives, I'm wasting mine, right? That's how I, that's how I view it. Like, mine is a waste if I can't do this. So this book, The Relationship Dismount, um, is my offering. It's not, you know, I want it to do well, not because I'm, you know, some people want things to do well because they want to be famous or they want attention or they want to be celebrity. All of that stuff is meaningless to me, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just humbled that, you know, we were able to get the book through. We were able to get it out. The relationship dismount. You know what I mean? Man, I'm proud of you, so. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm happy about that. Big stuff. No, it's helping everybody. So, I can't wait to get mine tonight. So the physical copy, which I recommend, because those, you know, it has all of the aesthetics and it's it's a beautiful it's work. It's dope. The I cover is it. fly. <laughs> right? yeah, I, love I love the it. cover. I was like, yo, that's just- the physical book will be out July fifteenth. Mm. The ebook will be out tonight. So everybody who pre-ordered their physical copy, if you still want to pre-order a physical copy, you can do that. You go to imzowilliams.com, click shop, pre-order your physical copy. Those physical copies, I'm definitely going to be autographing them all, sending them out. So, you know, I prefer you get the physical copy. Can so I that's get an autograph? Oh, good. Yeah, yes, can I can. get one? Look, yeah, absolutely. And don't be putting no... Yeah, don't be putting no dumb shit What's on up, baby? Like, yeah, actually, yeah. I want that autograph. Like, I want, like, some dope... You right. better put something cool in right. mind. You better draw <laughs> colors and shit and circles. What'd you say? You have a question about the book. Go ahead. Ask it, and then we got to get back to these phone lines because they jump in. Did you? Oh. So for people who want to know, July 15th, is that when the people receive their book in the mail, or that's when it will be sent out? Um, July 15th. That's a great question. First off, sometimes, you know, out of all the dumb shit you do, you have an intelligent <laughs> moment, and I'm flabbergasted by that moment. Uh, so, <laughs> so shout out kidding. to Chris. Chris, thank you for yeah, that smart Chris, moment. Yes, yeah. No, but I'm, uh, that was a great question. That comment is. Yes, I mean, you, you have to hear me and Chris. We go at it all. They go, day, it's so. funny. It's, it's funny. Pure yeah. comedy. It's annoying. Right. It's a little but no, um, Chris, that's a great, 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 great question. And uh, regarding that question, that is my target date to receive the books after they've been printed so really that's not a hard date it'll probably be anywhere from the 15th to the 20th but that's my that's my goal so i want to push towards the 15th as opposed to you know the 20th or the 25th or something like that my goal is get it print it send it back out 10 days once i get them I'm at the post office shipping them out. Boom, 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 boom. So that was a great question. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Enough of me. Let's get back to get what we doing here. Soul contracts. <laughs> I feel like I signed a gang of bad deals. Thank you, Whitney. Whitney just purchased my the book. real book. I was Thank just gonna, you, you know, Aww. my broke ass was gonna just get the little, you know, Jesus, online. I but just, I got, you know, for I gotta, a kiss on the cheek, up. I could have just. No, 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 okay. no right. trip. Thank you. Back to it. Though. All right. <laughs> so, so we're back on the line. We got people on the phone line right now. They want to talk. We're talking about soul contracts. I feel like I've signed a, a bunch of bad contracts in the past. I feel like, I feel like my whole life is, uh, you know. So, you know, shit, working out some relationship karma. So let's talk about this twin flames. I've heard about twin flames, right? Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. let's get into this. What are twin flames? I heard they're even more intense than soulmates and that a soulmate is part of a, a soul group. And, you know, everybody in that soul group is a soulmate. But the s twin flames are two people who share one soul, like destined to, to find each other across lifetimes, man. That sounds like, sexy. It, it does sound quite delicious, <laughs> but I've heard that it could be quite problematic. Wait. Quite, quite troublesome. The, the soul flame is problematic? The twin flame. Oh, the like, twin flame. I can't even you talk can't to even say it. Jesus. I, Twin Peaks. I don't know about uh, something. That TV show been on for years. Anyway, <laughs> Twin Peaks. Veronica, do you have any knowledge 
of the twin flames and what that means. Is that different from a soulmate? Yeah. Speak on it. Yeah, there's a difference between a karmic relationship and a soulmate and a twin flame. Mm-hmm. Um, a twin flame is literally, um, <laughs> if you believe in a higher self, right, which is sort of a direct connection to God, uh, twin flames share the higher self. And so I have, I'm in a twin flame experience. Oh, uh oh. Oh, say more. Yes. It's, How hot uh, is it? Ram. <laughs> 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 Marcus. It's probably, it's probably one of the most intense experiences one will ever have in this lifetime. And I would say that if the twins, as they come together, haven't done a lot of their spiritual work, it can be completely devastating because there's, there is a lot of intensity that comes in meeting your mirror, meeting wow. your exact mirror. Wow. So they reflect back to you everything that is powerful, everything that is unpowerful. So typically, they come together, they stay in the last incarnation, right, so that they can ascend. But it's, uh, if you haven't done spiritual work, in the world, if you have a lot of ideas about traditional relationships and, and you know, I've got to stay married because of the social contract and I have to be monogamous because of the social contract, all of those rules, all of that bullshit actually comes into the uh, presence of the fire. When they say flame, that's, that's what they mean. It's a fucking flame. Mm-hmm. All day, every day, all day, all night, around the clock, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So everything that is untrue starts to burn off. And so it depends on your level of readiness to experience the burning. If you're attached to the social stuff, then you'll go crazy because everything around you will disintegrate. Mm-hmm. If you're not attached to all that social shit, then you have a you have a shot at making it and allowing it to happen because you're free anyway. <laughs> Let me just say, can I so. just say something? Yo, yeah. Now this this is a prideful moment. Go in, bruh. I'm just so fucking happy to say Angela Dumas is my energy reality bender. Veronica Conway is my personal transformational coach. And Hecka Activated is my personal fucking psychic medium. And you got your personal... Well, what the hell me and we We the personal... You guys are the personal cake batter makers. (laughs) (laughs) We the personal... We the just personally kidding. dope. We're just we just keep you dope though. No, but we that's just true. Keep you and your you know what I'm saying? No so let me let me tell you let me tell you what Whitney and Ashanti are. Wow. I, I got a whole team of just really powerful sisters around me. Whitney uh, Ashanti is my personal PR person. Oh yeah. Word. And she kidding. she getting it in on a high level. You gonna see her work shortly. Like she's doing some major things for Zoe Williams and and the book and 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 the personality. I mean, I'm just sitting here in awe and thankful. Whitney uh, um, uh, Ashanti is bad, man. She's she's there, you know. And then Whitney, I met Whitney a little while ago. This is Chris's cousin. And one thing about Whitney, man, beautiful, intelligent, and loyal. Mm-hmm. She been with me through a lot of cornball folk, and Whitney been like, "Nope, Whitney been down. You cornball, and I'm rolling with the homie. We with this. That's what I'm with. And and, and anything Whitney needs because of that, I'm gonna help her do her thing. Thug life. Thug she life. said, "Thug life." Jesus, you got like, clack. You ready? We about to hit Jesus. this lick in a minute. So what'd you say? <laughs> right. Jesus. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Jesus. <Okay>. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> look, you already know how to keep. Look, you was getting too too sentimental right now. You, All right, my bad. Come on, I'm man. Sorry. To hell with you. Get Whitney. back to it. Jesus. That was cute. It's always real, cute when real Zell Nick R N S. You know, it's real cute when Zell gets vulnerable. I was not vulnerable. I <laughs> gangsters <laughs> over. Gangsters cry. You know what I'm saying? So listen, the phone lines are open. People want to talk to you guys about soul contracts, man. I, w- I want to renegotiate all my fucking contracts. I be looking at my contracts like, Jesus Christ. I feel like Joe Lewis. Like, I just signed a bad deal. I get 35 cents a fight. 
Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Phone lines are open. Let's do it right now. Darnell, line six, Long Beach. LBC, what up? Long Beach is in the house. Now you know you in trouble. <laughs> now you know you in trouble. Hey. What's up, Darnell? You guys can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you, brother. Speak on it. All right. Um, so I wanted to thank you for discussing this topic first. I'm a faithful listener. I love the show. Right, right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Um, basically, I've been on a spiritual path, and you know, I've been working on myself for quite some time. Um, I've, I've found my life's work, and I'm building uh, a, a solid foundation for my future wife. Um, my request for okay, those spiritual angel trifecta sure. is in regards to that twin flame connection. Like, what do you see? Who she is? When? Where? Why? How? Anything that that you may see. So, can I can I ask you a question too before before the angels go in? So you haven't met your wife. You're just doing this in preparation to meet her? Good question, LBC. Most definitely. Dang, I like this. Okay. And hit it, Angela. We and the angels. Be, we over here on hit it. Look, I'm Bar, just like, another. oh my God, that's so cute. Like, I'm just... <laughs> right. Dope. All right, cut that mics off. We over here on Kawanga, baby. <laughs> okay, go back. I'm... <laughs> go ahead, Angela. Oh, it's for me? Um... Uh, do I, what do I see? Can I ask how old you are? Yes, I'm 34. Okay, yeah, you're pretty close to ready. Um, have you had any other relationships that are, that are strong? I've had, yeah, I've had a few relationships that were strong. I learned a lot in the process. Um, I'm friends with most of my exes, um, because we, we went into it as friends. I'm not. Um, <laughs> but, this was a really good you know, time. It, it was a, this was a really good time. It was a maturing process, and also, you know, I knew that there was, was a time and place where yeah. I would be ready for this, and that's what I feel like my life has been leading towards. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just pose this to you. When we really are connected to ourselves is when the other person comes. So when we're looking for someone, that tends to actually put a space between you and them. So if you're in preparation to be with, you, in unity with someone, your preparation has got to be still about you. And I believe you know that. Is that true for you? Indeed, it is. Yeah. You just keep saying with you. And that will just unfold because you're going to meet yourself. And that's what the twin flame does. The twin flame is your mirror. Twin flames do not necessarily reincarnate time after time after time. In fact, they're typically a little bit unusual. They're, they're, uh, one will incarnate at a different time than another one mm-hmm. at, at some level of, of creation, so to speak. They will uphold each other in the form of spirit. And then when they come together, they can be fulfilled. Uh, Their destiny can be fulfilled. But there's more and more of this happening now because there's such a massive um, spiritual um, acceleration into our ascension in this planet right now. So it wouldn't be surprising for the way you're speaking and what I'm getting from you at a very deep level that you're really truly, at 34 years old, being connected to you, you'll, you'll find your... Your true, your true love. If you just stick on you, and allow it to wow. be revealed to you, you don't have to go looking for anything. Wow! Wow! Thank you! Wow. Thank you so much. Hey, man! Thanks, Darnell, for calling in. Long Beach is in the building because of you. We got to move on. We're going to Alabama now. Yeah. Deny? Is that deny on line one? Alabama. Hey, Bama. Danae, speak on it, Danae. Talk to us. Turn her, turn her up some so we could hear Danae. She sounds sweet as a pack of now ladies. <laughs> speak on it, Danae. Hey, <laughs> um, I really just have a question as far as the uh, internal perspective with myself. Um, do your angels see? Am I getting closer to my goal? Because um, I feel like I. I feel like I've wasted a lot of time and I've allowed a lot of obstacles 
to kind of stop me from achieving what I want to achieve. And um, the main thing that I want to do has kind of taken over me to some degree and has forced me to, um, I guess, seek it out. So I just want to know um, how long will it be or if I'm closer to a breakthrough or something along those lines. So this is what I'm going to go. I'm going to go first Veronica, then Hekka, because I, I can feel Hekka on this one. Hekka is all over this one right now. Am I bullshitting Hekka? Am I bullshitting? I'm sorry. I think what you're... I think what you're feeling is the fact that I can't hear anything, like mm. anything she's saying. I can't hear anything. So, Hekka, so, um, hold tight. To connect with her energy. Hold tight, mm. Hekka. Voice, did you? Just having a hard time. Don't worry about it. Hekka, uh, uh, Veronica, did you hear her? Yeah. Please okay. reframe the question for me, please. Are you there, Denai? No, she. The, the, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Can you restate the question for me, though, please? Restate the question real quick. Yes. Yeah. You want me to restate the question? Yes, yes, yes. No, I need you to do I need um, I just want to know. I just need an internal perspective. Like, am I getting closer yeah. to my goal um, for what I really, truly want to do or what I feel like I've came here to do? Okay, so what Denai or Denae said was, she wants to know if she's getting closer to her goal, her purpose, basically. Is she doing or is she on the path of doing what she came here to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. That was her, well, her question. Okay, great. So here's, um, I'm, not, I'm not technically psychic, so I'll just do a disclaimer, but here's what I know because I coach a ton of people into their purpose, and I've done that for the past 15 years. So here's what I know about it, and I have experienced deeply around it, is there's always a signpost into purpose. In other words, when we something feels really good to us, when we would do it for no money, when we would do it with, you know, with no sleep, right, when we're called to do it no matter what, that's a big signpost to what we're meant to be doing because there's always a joy in it. The reason that we miss uh, we miss our purpose is because oftentimes our gifting uh, is so intrinsic to us, it's so innate in us that we miss it. We don't actually, actually we don't give it the attribution of a gift because it's like, this is just who I am. This is what I do. And so we don't often think of it as a gifting. Right? So we have to begin to listen more deeply to our desire and to our pleasure and to our joy. Because the things that are really meant for us are truly, they're arousing, they're powerful, we're led by it, we're called by it, we're consumed by it. So if we are, if we're shut down to our purpose, then it's usually because there's a part of ourselves that has decided that we don't deserve to have the pleasure of doing exactly what we love. <laughs> so... We have, to li we have to listen to the call, and we have to listen to the call. Now, finding a way, now here's the thing. I think purpose precedes us. It's just like Angela said. She had no idea that there was a job in the world for a reality vendor, right? There's just, she, just, just, she could not have known that. But by answering the call, right, answering the, the, like the little, little taps on the heart, the little, little heartbeats that we get around it, then we, we can discover it. But we have to have the courage to follow our own desire and our own pleasure. And then when we can do that, then all bets are off. Wow. Yikes. Hekka, did you hear the question that yes. I restated? Yes, I heard you ask the question. There we go. Yes, now hook I did her up. I hear you ask the question. Um, yep. Can you ask it for me? I, I feel like uh, her, her path, her path, or the path that she should be on, is the path of doing some spiritual work. Is she on that path to teach that? I feel like she is. Denai, is, is uh -huh. what do you think about what Heck is saying? She said she feels like you should be on a, a path of spirituality, spiritual uh, study or inquiry what? or work. Uh, you know, what do you feel about that? Are you doing stuff like that? Um, no, well. Not maybe to the degree that I think Helka is talking about, but um, I would maybe link up with 
a certain person or we could speak on it or our minds will go there or we talk about it, but not really just studying it. Let me, you know what, you're bringing up something really big right now. Let me ask the angels, why do you think it's so hard to do the work? You know what I find? I find that there's a lot of, there's a lot of people who know the work, but they only know it intellectually. They don't know it experientially. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to implement. They don't know how to apply it. So what, Mm -hmm. because she's saying something very powerful that I think if we could answer this, a lot of people could get some edification and healing and they'll know how to implement what they know. Because when it comes to this spiritual work, all the gurus, all the angels are doing right now, they're just reminding you. You're in a space of spiritual amnesia. They're reminding you of what you've forgotten, what you already know, right? So so they're helping you remember your purpose, remember what you were here to do. So maybe you guys can frame it for them, some things that they could do. Veronica, can you hear me? Hold on. Yeah, I got you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, well, you know, I think that <laughs> it's it's a paradox inside of a paradox. I think that the work, the inner investigation to our own nature, our own blueprint, our own spirituality, our own sexuality, I think that is the work. I think that the jobs that we have have nothing to do the, the only reason I do the work that I do is because I found a way to make my own internal exploration my career and my vocation, <laughs> right? But here's the rub about that. Is that and back when I was starting out to do this 15 years ago, coaching wasn't even really a thing, right? But it was just a part of my calling and a part of I was meant to serve people in terms of midwifing them into themselves in a certain way. So I think this is the work, and I think that if you dare and do the inner work, right, then everything in your your external material reality takes care of itself. Money takes care of itself. Relationship takes care of itself. So we think we have to go chase relationship, money, fame, whatever, good hairdos. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. We think we've got to go chase that. But the rub is, is that when you do the inner work, those things show up in your external reality without effort. That's Mm. the rub. That's what people don't get. So I think that there's many things, many ways and approaches. I'm I'm special needs. I need a lot of help. That's why I have wizards around me. I'm slow. I learn slow. So I just say whatever resonates with you, if there's a mentor or a teacher or something or a practice, or even just getting silent every day and actually listening to the conversation with God, whatever that is for you, follow that trail. Like, that underdog? Wait, no. Follow that, whatever. <laughs> follow that, because <laughs> that, leads back to you. that leads you back to yourself, and that is the only work you need to be doing, because everything in your soul reality will take care of itself mm. from that stand. We get it backwards. We go chase the external shit, hoping that it will give us internal happiness. No, if you get internally happy, your external reality will reflect that. That's how it works. Wow. So listen, what about, and this is for everybody. What about the people out there who say, I've been doing this. I've been doing the work. And and, and it ain't happening. It's not happening. I'm not getting the results that I want. And and, and let me just preface this by saying this is what I say. I'll say, listen, you're you're too result focused. Right. I say, listen, your result or your accomplishment only lasts an instant. Once you've accomplished something, it's done. But you know what makes that accomplishment sweet? The journey, the process So many people forego the process and the journey for the outcome Mm -hmm. that they wind up disrespecting the journey and the process trying to get there. Like um, I heard a lady say this once. She said, in order to have what you want, you must first learn to want what you already have. Most of us don't want what we have in pursuit of what we want. (laughs) If I get what I want, I'll be happy. So that means you're unhappy with what you have. 
seeking what you want. <laughs> That's cr- no, it's crazy. Does that make sense? No, that makes. That makes What'd you say? Yeah, yeah. Um, Whitney <laughs> wanted to say. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Veronica. Whitney wanted to say something. Then Veronica. No. I was just gonna say too. I think people are looking for instant gratification when they're searching, but realistically, like even myself, this is personally coming from myself. I have done some work on myself and was upset that I didn't instantly get what I was seeking, mm. and then learned a little, you know, perseverance and just being patient. Literally a year later, I'm like, wow, this is really what I work. I I asked, I reached for this Mm -hmm. a year ago and I kind of got butt hurt that I didn't get it. And now it's here. And now I'm like, what's, what's the next, what's on the next. So Mm -hmm. it's gotta be, you gotta be patient too. And then I give up the jelly box. After, after, after 20 plus years of being on this walk and actually having come to this planet with a particular anointing around this work, I will say this. In this day and time, I, the reason that I deal with wizards is because I don't feel like I have the luxury of sitting around and waiting for motherfuckers that don't have enough mm. spiritual firepower to actually come in and excavate my shit out. What, well, what is spiritual firepower, power, though? What is, so, uh, wait, so, wait, wait, so wait, spiritual- wait, hold on. What is that? I need to know what is spiritual okay, firepower, so and I want Angela. I want everybody to talk about this shit. Spiritual firepower. So spiritual firepower is Miss Angela Dumas, who can bend reality in physical ways and spiritual ways and energetic ways. Spiritual firepower is the Chama. That man has so much power sitting in his field that he can activate things. Uh, you talk about Ifa. I mean. I go for the heavy hitting stuff because I because because I serve black people for one thing, and I know that we have so much damage to reconcile. I don't I don't have the luxury of trying to fuck around with some secret pablum and some. It's like who cares? Like we it is we are in a state of emergency, and if we don't remember our nature and remember that we all once embodied spiritual firepower but then we got trained in some christian bullshit and we we started talking about jesus uh oh uh oh but but nobody say nothing but bad about jesus got we have got to remember who the hell we are and we need potent firepower so i don't engage in shit that doesn't have an immediate transformative effect now mm. <laughs> I just don't, and so we have to. So we have to begin to have the discernment to be able to register and acknowledge that which actually speaks to the fire of our soul, mm. and uh, everything else is lame, weak, pablum. There's a lot of bullshit out here. Mm. It's like feel into what's true for you. You'll know it when you see it. You'll know it when you feel it. Mm. 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 Uh, Angela Dumas. Can you speak to me? Bingo, bingo. Bingo, ba- this this is what I love about Angela yeah. Dumas. Let me bingo, see. Bingo. She, nice she turns me on with this right now. Let me just tell you right now. Let me just <laughs> let me just tell you. She's so cold, man. It's so ridiculous the way she gets down. Like she was working with my son. Is it? Uh, no, I'm not like gonna use my son. I'm gonna use me. The first time she she worked with me, she was like, um, yeah, there's some fear and. You know, re- re- really sweet, really subtle. There's some fear and oh, there, there's some pride and yeah. And ah. oh, and then she'll make a noise. You whoosh, whoosh. Oh, it's gone. I moved it. And, and, and it's okay. <laughs> and, and bingo, bango, it's done. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> right? <laughs> and this, uh, that was the first conversation, right? And then she goes, oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So let me go back. Oh, okay. You're going to start making some money. And then I, I, I hear her in the background this is my reality. I mean, I will put it out there. You know, I was struggling, you know, with these ideas and concepts. Then I hear her hit a tuning fork. And she goes, yeah. there, there it is. It's set. It's in the universe forever. That's dope. Mm. It's yeah. never going to move. And, and it's there forever. Bingo, bango. <laughs> what? Bingo, bango. And, then, bingo, and, bingo. and then I promise you, I fucking promise you, two, three days later. Right. Shit right. just started moving. Let me, I, I'll give right. you my story. Listen, the Rebirth of Seeds was written 10 years ago in 2005, right? No, the Rebirth of Seeds, my first book. Wow. I had about six, seven, eight, nine hundred copies left. When I tell you, she said, oh, you're going to start making a little money. Some things are going to change. Things are shifting. Bingo, 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 bingo. 
<laughs> Fucking two, three days later, shit start flying out the door. I sold them all. Do you understand? Like, it just changes. Spiritual She's a re- firepower. It's spiritual, spiritual firepower, firepower, man. Like, I, I don't want to bring nobody. Like, people be like, Zoe be bringing weird people on the show. You motherfucking right. All day. Normal is prison, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to give you some keys. I'm trying to give you the keys to get up out this motherfucker. Woo! <laughs> right? Woo! That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and Hecka, tell you, I'll be a Hecka, how often do I, am I on the phone with you? Oh, we're on the phone a lot. And I'll be like, Hecka, what the fuck is going on in the universe? I need you to do some shit. What's happening? Mm-hmm. Talk to the oracles. And she'd be like, uh, don't go on this day, nigga. <laughs> the moon is void. You better not do this shit today. <laughs> and I go, all right, I ain't doing it. <laughs> this is a real situation up in this piece. Y'all better respect the game or the game will leave your punk asses behind. Now, let's get back to the phone lines. We got a, uh, who, T-Million? T million from Harlem. Hey, city so nice they had to name it twice. New York, what's up, baby? <laughs> what's up, guys? I love y'all. Hey, T million. Hey, T million. <laughs> she cute. I was waiting for some hood. Um, Nick be like, what's up? Right. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I don't really have a specific question. I just know that I go through a lot of emotional, depressing emotions and just feeling down for long periods of time and I just need an explanation or something I don't know but it's held me back for a couple of years now Angela Duma I couldn't really hear what was said I'm sorry. she said uh, T-, T million said she's going through and you know what I'm going to restate everybody's question so the people who can't hear I'll make sure everybody here she said she's been going through some depression she's been feeling down for the last couple of years is that what you said T million yes sir yes so she said she's been going through that for the last couple of years she's been struggling with these negative feelings these bad feelings the negative emotions and she's been down and feeling a little depressed what is that sitting on T million's heart it's a sister Okay, so what happens with any feeling and emotion is that it's trying to leave. And all of us are very, very habituated in wanting to stuff that shit back down because we're afraid to feel it. So what happens is we just need to learn how to let it out. And they're very safe and very super effective, super powerfully uh, uh, strong ways of doing this very quickly. But we don't like to fear the feelings because that's what humans do. We like to deflect, avoid, run away, wish it was different, and that locks our shit in place. Mm. So we've got to be able to open it up to let it out. Now, there's mm. a specific way to do that. There's multiple ways, and I'm not sure this is the time exactly because I'm not sure. I'm just kind of stating the fact here or mm-hmm. well, the way I see it. So just know that there's a way to do that, but you have to, there's a courageousness that comes to be willing enough to do what it takes and to recognize inside of you that right okay, road, so that right branch in the road that says, I want to, I'm, I'm letting this thing work. go. I'm work with that saying. person. Wait, who is that talking? Hold on. Was that T Million? Yes, that was me. Okay, what did you say? Say it again, because they can't hear you, so, so say to it to be... me. Sorry. Mm-hmm. She's saying that I'm having trouble with letting certain feelings go. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's what she said. So how how do you do that? Can how, you tell me what feelings is it? She said. She, I would think I let it go, but then it'll beat me up again. Oh wow! So so yeah, Angela, you're resonating. Yeah. <laughs> you're, yes, you're resonating with her. She said, you know. She'll think she's she thinks yeah. she's let it go, but then it'll come back and beat her up again. She wants to know how okay, can she get it out of yeah, her? Yeah, there's more to be let go of. It will always keep coming up until it is gone. And don't be fooled by people saying that it can't be that it'll be just forever and ever. That's not true. The thing is, we got to be able to sit in the belly of that fire sometimes to know how. And that's the thing, I, you know, sometimes telling you how is not a good idea in the middle of a show like this unless I can spend a minute with you to do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Out. Go ahead. Damn it. Go ahead. Shit. I, I, go ahead. Okay. Well, let's just do a simple version. 
let's do something really simple. Um, is it T million? I couldn't quite hear the name. I'm sorry. Yes, it's T yeah, million. Okay. Jamie, if that helps. T- I know T million is a lot. All right. So, so I can't hear. So all I can say is this. T million, can you find inside of you right now where that feeling is? That yucky, pushing down feeling inside that you've been struggling with. Can you find it? Do you know where it is? Just locate the source within yourself. You don't have to tell me where it is. Let me know when you've got it. I think it's in my heart. She says she thinks it's in her heart. Good. Yep. Okay. Now... And anybody who's doing this with us, if you've got any similar thing, you've got a little funny feeling in your heart, a little pressure, a little tightness, just come on in. And even if you don't, do it anyway. It's fun. Okay? It's fun and makes it easy. All right, Chameleon, I need you to dive into the center of that heart with your knowingness. Just imagine you're going to dive straight in like you are an Olympic diver, and you're going to stick the point right in the center, just like T, uh, Zoe's book, you know? And you just go right straight into the center of it and keep going into the center of that icky, icky feeling. Just dive right on in and keep on going, diving deeper yet, and just diving and keep going. Tell me when you get to the other side. Just dive right to the center, to the other side. Tell me when you're there. Keep on going. Allow it to be easy. This is your magnanimous mini-you, which is all of what you are in one poignant fell swoop like a perfect dart. Just going to bring the love to the center of this place, and it just slips right through, giving that, that portal everything it needs in that moment and slipping through to the other side. Let me know when you get there. Oh, I'm drowned looking for this stuff. We can't hear. Say it again, T Million. I'll I'll, re- I'll repeat it. I said I don't want to drown looking for it. She says she doesn't want to drown looking for it. There's nothing to look for. You already know where it is. Just dive through the middle of your heart, hon. Mm. Nothing to you're thinking. Get out of your head and just dive right through it. That is a knowingness that you have. You do not have to think. Dive straight through the middle of that heart, right to the other side. Go. <clears throat> There's no drowning. There's only vitality. There's only aliveness. Just dive right through. I never said water. Okay, I'm there. She says she's there. Okay, good. What are you experiencing? What are you seeing? Oh, my liquid. She said that, liquid? That like liquid. Liquid? Yeah, that's what she said. Keep going. Keep go, go all the way through to the other side. Go through the dartboard. Get to the other side. Keep going. I'm actually working with you here on another level that you may not be aware of. But I have to have you do it yourself. You've got to do this. Pass the liquid. There is no liquid. That's your imagination. Get through it to the other side. Decide to get through it. Choose. Keep on going. Just keep going. What did what did you say, T Million? I feel peaceful. She said it's peaceful. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> okay, now this is this is just a teeny tiny taste, but it gets you immediate results if you just keep going. Now you can practice this on your own. There's no harm in that at all. Just keep practicing it. Especially if you feel yucky, and even if you don't, practice. Zipping through, because you're in charge of your life. You're the one who woke your eyes up this morning, opened them, got out of the bed, and got out 
you are the champion of your own life if mm. you would only allow yourself to be. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. I'm sorry. This is great. I have one more. What'd you say, T Million? Say it again. Tell me. Can I ask a question for Hecka? She wants to ask Hecka a question. I'm here. She's there. She oh. can hear. Come on. She's okay. there. Okay. Um, all right. I have a five year old daughter, and, you know, my her dad, at first, he always say that that was his kid. So he wasn't there for like the first three years. And he was he was locked up. So he came home, and we tried. I don't know what changed his mind about how he was feeling, but I was working and everything, so I kind of felt like he was just going with the flow because I'm very generous. But now he's back locked up, and I don't know. I feel like there's a soul tie there, but on the other hand, I feel like I can't keep waiting for him to do the right thing. Hecka, you hear that? And, yes, I do. I do hear her. And uh, I would agree that it is a soul tie. But before I go into that, I wanted to, to say something else, if you guys don't mind. I am feeling that you and your mother in this lifetime switched places from a previous lifetime. And I think wow. you having an understanding, you having an understanding of what has taken place would help you to understand why all the things that have taken place in this lifetime have taken place. A part of your okay. depression and all of these things that you're going through, you're going through them because you have yet to recognize and understand what the root cause of the problem is. When you were going through this tunnel that you were going through, the first thing that you faced off with was your mother in a previous life. Mm -hmm. You have to accept the reality of the situation between you and your mother. When you do that, you're going to find that you're going to have the best healing that you could have ever possibly had, and you're not going to even want the guy that you're speaking about any longer. Oof, oof, oof. <sighs> T-Million, you there? I'm here. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Let's all love on her. Let's mm. just give her some love. It's all right. <laughs> so dope. It's all love. Sending love and good vibes. I mean, that's the purpose of the show. That's why you called in. You called it. You got exactly what you called in for, right? Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Yee. Thanks, Hecka, for, you know, thank you. Jeez. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thank all you guys. Hey, it's all good. Call back anytime. You know, that's what we do these shows for. We want the breakthrough. We want it. Listen. Always listen. listen, thank you, hon. We appreciate you. Harlem in the building. Thank you so much, T Million. Let me just say this. Day, Let me say this really quickly because we only have five minutes left. This show flew out the dough. It literally did. Just that quick, out the dough. We we're done. But I've got five minutes to give everybody an opportunity. Because I'm giving listen. The the angels on the phone, they do what they do. They found their purpose. Word purpose in Sanskrit is Dharma. They found their Dharma. They're living their purpose. So don't think you're doing them a favor by reaching out to them. <laughs> they're doing, when you reach out to them, they're living their purpose. <laughs> right? You might be calling them or reaching out to them to connect with yours. So think about it. Who need to make that call? Them or you. <laughs> so with that said, I'm telling you right now, you better connect with all three of them. Veronica Conway, how do they find you? Uh, I love this show. It was so gooey and warm. And Girl, so don't warm. you say gooey. Again, <laughs> oh, here we now. go. <laughs> <laughs> I love me some gooey. Right. Yes. Spirit, man. Gooey golden spirit. Uh, Social media, all things Veronica Conway, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, I think on Instagram, I'm Veronica Conway 007, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm starting another boot camp, so all of y'all business 
money-minded folks email me at veronica at veronicatomboy.com and let's go print some paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And get her Black Mastery NLP program, Black Mastery NLP. Uh, You get it at blackmastery.com. Go do that right now. Go get Black Mastery right now, blackmastery.com. Now, Angela Dumas has a Facebook. You guys inundated Angela the last time she was there. She gave out her personal email. She ain't going to do that again. Uh, Angela, (laughs) what's the Facebook Facebook link for people to get to you? Okay, Angela Dumas, and it's spelled Angela Dumbass. Just kidding. Angela (laughs) Dumbass. Literally. But it's really A N G E L A D like Daniel, U M like Mother, A S like Sally, Spiritual Millionaire. And uh, you can get me out of just my name at Facebook, Angela Juma or Angela Juma Spiritual Millionaire. That should do it. Uh, for now, I'm actually working on a really awesome project that I'm not able to really tell you about quite yet but when i when when i'm ready i will let y'all know it's amazing and don't worry angela thank you this was a great and go ahead no go ahead i was just gonna say you'll be back (laughs) all right well i want to congratulate you on your book too and i really loved uh being with on the show with everybody it was really great thank you so much thank you angela thank you thank thank you you everyone for uh, participating thank you so much hecka activate it yes um Thank you, Zoe. You could find me at uh, anybody that wanted to contact me. They can contact me by visiting my website at www.heka, and it's spelled H-E-K-A, activated, just like it sounds, dot com. Heka, activated, dot com. Perfect, perfect. Ashanti, girl on fire. You PR extraordinaire. Oh, yeah, thanks, so. Mm-hmm. Um, you can hit me up on Instagram and Twitter at Ashanti Ford Live. Keep subscribing to my webisodes, Girl on Fire Production on YouTube. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Whitney Tabor. Yo, what's poppin', guys? You guys can find me on what? Twitter, Instagram, Miss Tabor. Also, my my new photos are coming to MissTabor.com. Be yes, ready. Yes, yes, T-shirts, yes, yes, posters, yes. all that. So get excited. Excellent, excellent. Listen, the book is available. Well, it won't be available just yet, but we uploaded it to Kindle today, and the physical copies will be here in a couple of weeks. Check check Amazon.com for the relationship dismount. It should be up in a little bit, uh, the Kindle version. I'm, I'm appreciative of everybody who supports me. And please go pre-order your copy of the relationship dismount, how to stick the landing when leaving a toxic relationship. The breakup makeup book is crazy. 12 chapters, exercises at the end of every chapter. It's retarded. It's recoculous. Recoculous is ridiculous. You just replace dick with cock it's just <laughs> fire go to imzowilliams.com and get your copy of the book i appreciate oh, everybody this was fire and uh friday show gonna be even crazier i appreciate you guys we'll see y'all friday voice of reason we out